I want to deal with a comment that was left on the video dealing with the backslidden preacher versus the backslidden Christian. The comment was, I noticed your videos dealing with the Bible get less views. But yes, last of the last days indeed. I'll read that again. I noticed your videos dealing with the Bible get less views. But yes, last of the last days indeed. And I'm going to give an answer on why those Bible videos get less views than any other videos. And this is not just on my channel. Unless you have a lot of subscribers, you're not going to get too many views. People in this day and time, especially in the so-called black community, want drama. Those are the videos that get the most views are the drama videos of ratchetness, of anything considered ungodly. Those are the videos that get the most views. Now, I want to start out with the scripture, Second Thessalonians, the second chapter, reading the third to the eighth verse, and it reads as follows. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. I think that much of what we see today when you hear the media or society or even government attack the church, they attack religion, they attack people's belief, things that go against your religious belief, your religious principles, they will come against that. So if you say this violates my religious views or my religious principles at one point in time, they used to respect that. They valued that. And they would adjust their laws around that. If you have certain religious views or principles, you can receive an exemption. But nowadays, the government is controlling your religious views and principles. They're telling you what you can believe and what you can't believe in, what you can accept and what you cannot and won't accept. And you have no say in that. But then again, people do have a say. But we're living in times where people don't fight for their rights. So the more we allow the system to control us, to control our thoughts and our actions, and even control what we say, that only gives them more and more power and authority over you. You are creating a God. You are making them God. You are putting them in the position of God because now they have control over the masses. I'm going to read that fourth verse again. Who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. The fifth verse says, Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. In other words, you were warned about these things. The sixth verse says, And now ye know 
what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doeth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. For the mystery of iniquity. Have you ever questioned why people do the things they do and accept those things as being normal? Iniquity and sin, abominations, and everything that is not like God is considered normal. But then when you talk righteousness and holiness, then you catch hell. You're ridiculed. You're ridiculed. And you are now in these times attacked. For the mystery of iniquity doeth already work. The mystery of iniquity. That's the question. Why would someone go out and do the hideous crimes that they do? Yes, people may talk about it. They may sound like they're going against it, but yet it's accepted as the norm. Life goes on. For the mystery of iniquity doeth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. The A first says, And then shall the wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. The next chapter or verse is taken from Matthew's, the 24th chapter, reading the 12th to the 14th verse. And because iniquity shall abound, in other words, because sin and transgressions and abominations and everything that's damnable shall increase. In other words, things are going to get worse. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. In other words, people will become a lot colder, a lot meaner, a lot hateful. We're going to see situations like in the media where people are constantly fighting and going at each other's necks. It's because iniquity or the increase of iniquity. Because of the increase of ungodliness. Because of the increase of people turning away from God. The love of many shall grow cold. And that's because of the iniquity or better yet the mystery of iniquity. The mystery of iniquity is causing all of this chaos in the world that we now live in, that we've accepted as normal, that we become so accustomed to. But then you have those very few that are striving to live righteously. And the Bible speaks on them as well. Imagine maintaining your sanity, and your religion, or your conviction with all of this confusion and negativity going on around you. That's strength. We're quick to call people strong. That's a strong woman. That's a strong person. That's a strong this. I'm strong. But the Bible says, let the weak say I'm strong. And you could become weak in the midst of confusion, in the midst of iniquity, in the midst of darkness. But it says in the 12th verse, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. So, the mystery of iniquity or dealing with iniquity 
is negative, it's dark, but yet at the same time, it's a test for those that's striving to live right. It's a test for those that submit themselves to the knowledge of God. Because the 13th verse says, but he that shall endure it unto the end, if you're able to maintain your principles, your values, and not give in to this evil society or this wicked world or spirit, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. It's like when we were in school, and we had our final exam. Those are stressful times because now everything you learn throughout the year, you have to study for that. And how can you study? How can you really study everything that you were taught throughout the year? So you had to do your best to study to try to pass those exams at the end of the school year, which will determine whether you go to the next grade or not. But in the 13th verse it says, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And then the final verse in the 14th verse says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all generations. And then shall the end come. I'm going to read that again. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. So this word, this gospel that you hear preached, that you reject, will be a witness against you or for you. If you reject this word, if you turn a deaf ear to this word, this is your witness against you. When you find yourself standing before the judgment seat of God and of Christ, now you have to give an excuse and now you have no excuse because the word itself does not return unto the most high void. It's going to accomplish what it was set out to do. Either it's going to accomplish you receiving it or you rejecting it. But if you reject that word, that word goes back with a message that you rejected it. So in the day of judgment, this world, this word or this gospel of the kingdom will be a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. So when we talk about the mystery of iniquity, and why people reject the word of God or why videos like mine or like these biblical videos get less views. Well, this young man is correct. But we also know there has been a great falling away. And people want drama. They want drama. They want division. They don't want truth. And that's why we find today truth is being silenced. Righteousness is being silenced because they reject it. So I have a channel where I teach the Bible. Actually, it's on my dream channel, which I'm going to put a link to the on the bottom here. You guys can go check it out for yourself and subscribe. But those of you that have submitted themselves to the knowledge of God and of Christ. We're living in times where you are constantly faith, faced with a choice and a decision. A choice and decision that will affect your judgment. Whether you enter into paradise or whether you enter into hellfire. It's all up to you. It's the choices that you make in this life. And we're living in times when you don't know when your last day is coming. 
There are people that laid down and went to sleep, didn't wake up. When I had COVID and I went downstairs to get some ginger ale and I was pouring that ginger ale, had no idea that I was going to pass out. That could have been my last day. On 9-11, I had an appointment in Tower 1, I believe it was, of the Trade Center. But I overslept. Had I went as scheduled, that could have been my last day. But the Lord spared me. So we don't know when our time is coming. And you have people that's playing and trying to manipulate their time. They think you have enough time. But you don't. Because tomorrow is not promised to us. So feedback. Tell me what you think. Subscribe. Until next time. I'm fearless.